Hello everyone, welcome back. I want to use this video to uh, go through lecture number five, understand swear weathers. Uh, you need to read actually a lot of chapters. So uh, I hope during the spring break, you have uh, gained enough energy, recharge yourself enough, okay? So, but the good news is, you only need to read the pages listed in the presentation. So that is Meteorology Today, but let me double check. It should be Meteorology Today, okay? So uh, here, here is our uh, outline. So in this week, week 10, we need to, we just need to study air masses, France, and mid latitude cyclone. Okay, so you need to answer the questions I listed in our study qu study guide question, and I also uh, copied it over here. I copied them over here. And next week we are going to use the same presentation, but you are going to study thunderstorms, tornadoes, and hurricanes. Uh, to me, I think the the book did a very good job on those concepts, and the videos also give you a very good uh, study guide on those key concepts and help you answer those questions. So make sure you watch those videos and read your textbook, okay? All right, so let's get started. <clears throat> Number one is, what is air mass? What is air mass? Air mass, you need to uh, Remember, there are two keywords. Num uh, three, I'm sorry, three keywords. Number one is it's large, right? It's large. The diameter you can see it's 1600 kilometers. It can cover well half of the Canada, like this, okay? As opposed to the air parcel, we were studying it, right? Air parcel uh, in the last module when we studied the humidity and instability, st right? So that one is small. You can uh, compare it to the size like a uh, like a balloon, but this one is a mass of air. It's very large. Okay. So the keyword number two about air mass is it's uniform in terms of temperature and humidity. So that is also how we classify those air masses. You can see each air mass, the name, you have CA, CP, MP, they say. Actually, one letter, the first letter, we usually put it as smaller case, lower case, that represent moisture. Okay, C, as you can see here, represent continental, stands for continental or land source area, means it's dry. Okay, C means dry, means it's originated from the land. And M means maritime, means water source area, so it means moist. So if you see an air mass was born by on top of ocean, you should put M. Okay, on top of land, you should put C. Okay, and the second letter actually indicating temperature. So you can see A represent Arctic or Antarctica. Okay, in the southern hemisphere, and P means polar. That means the A and P. They mean they mean very very cold. Okay, and T as opposed to T means tropical. Tropical means warm, hot, right? Okay, so that is the temperature and humidity, okay? So you can see this, uh, you know, the, the worldwide, we have many, many air masses, but this slide just lists you the what the air masses affect, affect United States, okay? So you can see United States, we call United States is a mid-latitude region, okay? What does that mean? Means that can attract can attract two types of air mass. One is cold, you can see A, T, P, Arctic, polar, right? Okay, from the north, and also the warm air mass from the south. Okay, so that is the special thing in the United States, and also for China, for many uh, countries and regions between those middle latitudes, meaning the latitude between like 50, 60 ish, okay, down here to like 30 ish. This is a mid latitude region, okay. So we can attract two types of 
、uh, air masses, cold and warm. They constantly, you know,、uh, in the summer, those warm air masses will become stronger, so that will push to the north. Okay, but in the winter, northern. Uh, part of those air masses very cold. They will travel down. They gain a little strength because it's cold, right? Okay, so they will go down all the way to Texas. That's why、uh, a few weeks ago, Texas, you have the snow, right? So that is an extremely strong cold air mass travel down all the way to Texas. In United States, it's a little bit special because we have nothing, no terrain barriers, means mountains in between. That is our great plan. Okay, so the air masses they can go all the way to Texas, or warmer air masses can go all the way to Minnesota. Okay, so that is a very special thing for United States. Okay, and the number three keyword is travel as one. Okay, meaning those air masses when they move around, they won't fall apart. They just move together. Okay, they won't like、uh, other things. They just fall apart. No, they travel together. Okay, so remember those three keywords and how you name your air masses. Number one letter, the first letter mean uh means stands for moisture, continental versus maritime. Okay, the second letter uppercase means temperature. Okay, and the source region, the source area. Then what is source area? That is where this air mass was produced. Okay, so not everywhere you can make air masses. In order to make air masses, your source region, your surface, earth surface, need to meet those requirements. Okay, it should be a uniform land or sea surface where air masses can stay there enough to acquire to inherit it. In, okay, the temperature and humidity from the surface, subsurface of the ground or the sea. Okay, so you can see. Well, Canada is a good place because you know very cold, right? Alaska, the、uh, the Alaska Bay is a very good place. Okay, but in the central part of United States, it's not because you can see they constantly move moving back and forth. Your air mass cannot stay, right? So you need to stay long here, long enough to gain the、uh, properties, the characteristics from the earth surface. Okay. All right, here bold word air masses, and this is how you name it. I covered it already. Okay, so read your textbook to learn the、uh, more details. Okay. All right. So, but don't think、uh, our air mass is just、uh, like if they were born as cold, they are always cold. No, you can see here. If they travel to the south, they will gradually gain the energy from the ground, from the earth surface. Right? They will become warmer. Okay, if those like dry, like sea, sea air mass, if they are they are original dry, if they move over past those great lakes, they will absorb a lot of moisture evaporated from the lake. Okay, so this another concept we call that air mass modification. Okay, well why they move? They are blown by the wind. Okay, <laughs> lecture three we learned that. Well, modification is as they move, they pushed by the wind, blown by the wind.、Uh, they will get modified by the by the subsurface. For example, this Arctic air masses, right? So when they go down to the south, originally very cold, but will become warmer and warmer, right? Okay, but when they move over, for example, Hudson Bay. Or the Great Lakes, they get they can get moisture. They will become very moist to the up down here. Okay,、uh, in when they hit you know New York, this place. Okay, so this give us a very good interesting phenomenon、uh, close to this area, the Great Lakes. Okay, especially in New Jersey,、uh, New York states. Okay, this part basically the southeast side of those Great Lakes. Okay, so that is the lake effect snow. Okay, so you can see air masses originally is very very cold, but when they go down here, they become they can become warm. They will start rising, right? So they will lay down a lot of moisture. Well, originally mean maybe it's very cold, 
But but when they get down to this to this side of the lake, they will absorb a lot of moisture from the lake, and they will become moist. So that is why in the winter, on the southeast southeast part of the lake, okay, this area, they will have a lot of snow. Okay, so things like this. That is exercise for people living that in that area, New York, Buffalo, <laughs> this area. Okay, so that's called lake effect snow. It's related to a very important concept. It's called、uh, air mass modification. Okay, so down here in California, well, we have this maritime air mass, right? They will travel down, but when they climb over the mountains, they will lay down a lot of snow here. And when they get down the other side of the mountain, okay, in Wyoming, you know, Montana, this area, they will become fairly dry. Okay, so that's another re, another、uh, another example. Okay. All right. So then, well, here、uh, to California, right? Where our moisture come from? Also brought by a very important air mass. Okay, but their air mass move very fast. Move very fast. Uh, uh, move very fast to our region. It's uh, it's because it it's、uh, it takes an express train. It's called pineapple train. Why we call that pineapple? Because this air mass originally from Hawaii. Okay, so in the winter, when our you know the high pressure along our coast become a little bit weaker, okay, so those pineapple press they can come come here. They can deliver a lot of more very moist air mass down here to California, especially to San Francisco. Okay, so that will give us our winter storm. Okay, so watch this video and also read your textbook. Okay, to learn more details about this. Okay, that's related to life here. All right, so that is our air mass and、uh, the air mass modification. Another very important concept is fronts. Okay, like I mentioned earlier, right here in United States, because we are in the mid latitude, we constantly have Cold air mass and hot air mass moving into our regions, right? So sometimes cold air mass will become very strong. Okay, they will push against warm air mass, relatively weaker down here. Okay, down to Mex Gulf Gulf of Mexico or even Caribbean Sea. Okay, but in the summer, those warm air mass, okay, will gain. Strengths will become stronger. They can push against those cold air mass, retreat back. Okay, so you can see we constantly have the battle between cold air mass and warm mass, warm air mass. The you know the front line. Okay, <laughs> between those two different air masses, we call that a front. Okay, so that basically is when cold and warm air masses meet. The warm air mass and cold air mass will become will form this transition zone. It's called front. Okay, so then we have different type of front. Okay, we have cold front, we have warm front. Okay, that's two basic、uh, types you must know. Okay, but we also have. Uh, uh, Stationary front and occluded front. Okay, that is later. Okay, related to our mid-latitude cyclone. Okay, but at this point, remember here you need to differentiate, be able to differentiate cold fronts or warm fronts. As the name tells, cold fronts means cold air is very very strong. Okay, cold air mass is very strong. So you can see they push against the warm air mass, retreat back. Okay, so、uh, then warm air mass is forced up, okay, almost vertically. I want to, I want you to、uh, pay attention to this、uh, word, forced up abruptly. So they rising up, they rising up almost vertically. So that produce this cumulodimbus cloud, means this tower cloud, very tall cloud. Okay, and precipitation is usually very short and intense. Okay, and it's just right here before where this 
interface, this line moving to, right, in front of the code front, you will have very heavy precipitation. Okay. Also, you need to know the strong cold air and warm, weak warm air in between this cold front. You need to use this blue line with sharp teeth with triangles. Okay, that is our symbol for cold fronts. Okay, and warm fronts. <coughs> As the name tells, it's relatively, you know, warm air mass is relatively stronger, okay? Cold air mass is weaker. So you can see here, warm air, they just push against the cold air, retreat back, right? Okay, moving to this direction. But warm air is, they're fluffy, okay? They're fluffy. So they basically will form this relatively a flat, you know, slope, okay? They will glide over on top of the cold air okay so they will form different different type of cloud you will have stratus clouds in, instead as opposed to this one cumulative inverse vertical cloud you will have these sheets like cloud okay and they will gradually rising up give you auto stratus zero stratus will eventually dissipate become serious okay and as opposed to cold front, the precipitation may last long, but less intense, okay, because they just gradually rising up, okay? And you can see the symbols is semicircles, it's not triangles, okay? Strong warm air push against the weak, air, weak cold air moving to this direction, okay? All right, just uh, want to compare those two type of fronts side by side, okay? On top, this is the warm front, okay, it's wider but shallower, but down here, that is your cold front, it's narrow but tall, okay, so that is two types of front. Okay, so then the next very important concept is mid-latitude cyclone. So what's that? Basically, that is this, this like wedge-like weather events, you see that on satellite. Okay, so this mid latitude cyclone, we have two parts. We have a cold front, like a mouse just hold here, okay, draw you, and here is your cold, is your warm front. This is the cold front, this is the warm front, okay. Why I know this? Because you can see this different color represent precipitation, okay, maybe a little bit smaller. Well, you can see this precipitation line is very narrow, right? So that is your cold front. And here, very wide, that is your warm front. Then how it forms? Okay, let me use this animation to show you. But remember, you need to read the page 323. Okay, so here is the thing. Number one is, uh, it's mid-latitude, right? It's located at mid-latitude. You have this low pressure, okay? To the north, from the north, they can draw the cold, dry air. But from the south, they can draw warm air, okay? But because of Coriolis force, you cannot move directly into this low, right? So you can see here, I give you this, oh, sorry. I give you this uh, uh, solid angle. That means it's deflect to the right, right, in northern hemisphere. Let's imagine this is the United States. Okay. So you can see we will have those two transition zones. You can see to this transition zone, the cold air is more direct into moving into this zone, right? But warm air deflect away. But where they go? They go to this transition zone more directly, but cold air, they deflect away, right? So you can see if you're living in this area, you will feel more stronger, uh, cold air mass. So this is a cold front, okay? And opposed to here, you'll, you will feel more about that warm air from the south. So you will form a warm front. So that is why in the previous slide, I know low pressure is here, cold front is here, and warm front is up there, okay? So that is a must, okay? And another thing is, they were spinning like the satellite image show you. They will spin around this low pressure. But keep in mind two things. Number one, 
this cold front moving much faster than the warm front. So eventually they will like zipped up. Okay, the cold front will catch up the warm front. Okay, so they will merge up, give you an occluded front. Okay, that is the end session of the uh, of this mid latitude cycle. Okay, and they never like rotate all the way back here. That's no, it's impossible. It's always before that ha can happen, your cold front can catch up your warm front and become occluded front, like I showed you here, like purple line, occluded front. Okay, so please read your page three to three to learn the life cycles. In your uh, quiz, you have a question about this. Okay, make sure you read those life cycles. How that formed? But in your uh, quiz, don't just list those six stages. You want to explain a little bit how that formed. Okay, show me your read the textbook. <laughs> okay, and different weather. Actually, it's very simple. Okay, so it's just weather related to two different type of fronts. Okay, cold front, warm front. Okay, but a few uh, one thing I need to point out is this pressure. Okay, so why location A, like location A here, behind the cold front, air pressure is rising because cold air control this area. Cold air is heavy, so give you rising air pressure. Okay, but B, low steady pressure because you have this warm air and very close to this um, cold front, your air also rises, right? So it will give you low pressure. Okay, and see why it's falling because warm air is moving to you and warm air is rising, right? So that is why pressure have different chain, chain, uh, changing pattern, changing trend in different location corresponding to map over here. Okay, and in terms of the wind, don't physically memorize this. Just use the three forces on wind we learned in the previous module, right? So you go to the low in northern hemisphere, you need to turn to the right, okay? So that is how you figure out the, uh, the wind direction, okay? So make sure you read the textbook to learn this. And also in our study guide module, you have very good video about this, okay? All right, then you may want to ask why we have this low pressure initially, right? That is related to the upper air flow, okay? Remember we have this jet stream okay, between uh, the, uh, the warm air uh, coming from the tropical region and the cold air from the uh, polar region. The warm air will push up, right, become this uh, will be pushed up, become this upper air flow, okay? They will have some meander, we call that uh, uh, the, 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 the um, uh, Jasper meander, okay, or raspy waves, right? <laughs> raspy waves. So you will have different waves. So imagine this is your roller coaster. So air flow rising down, rising down. So when you go down, those air mass actually they converge okay they will converge down go all the way to the ground will give you a high pressure but when the when they go up they tend to diverge they will just spread out in the upper sky so they will become you know less uh, become like a vacuum so that like a like a like your vacuum Okay, you use that to clean your floor right they will suck the air from the ground become this low trigger this low pressure on the surface, okay? So that is related to this, uh, the wave, the meander in your jet stream, okay? So that is, that is why you have this low initially, you have this wave stage initially, okay? You have this wave developed initially, okay? That's related to the upper air flow. So in the winter, these raspy waves will become very dynamic. So that is why in the winter we have a lot of mid latitude cyclone affect our, uh, you know, the Central America, okay, Central United States, excuse me, okay. So you can see here that is more upper level. You have this cold air and become when the cold air becomes stronger, it will push against, right? So this air will go up and trigger this low, 
okay, will trigger this law. Okay, so you can see right here. Okay, and then you will have the wave developed. All right. Okay. So that is your mid latitude cyclone. You need to know why you have that mid latitude cyclone, and you should be able to describe the life cycle of your mid latitude cyclone. Okay, like I showed you here. Okay, and different weather associated with different locations in this mid latitude cyclone. Okay, very important. Okay. So then the remaining three uh, concepts we will learn that in the next week, but I want to cover it in this uh, in this video. Okay. So number one is this thunderstorm. Okay. Specifically in this chapter, we want to learn convectional thunderstorm. So basically, it's triggered by convection, air convection. What is convection? Warm air rises. Right, but when this warm air rises, they rise very fast, and this warm air is very aggressive, rising up. Okay, so they must pass this critical line called zero degrees Celsius. It's not your lifting condensation level, okay? So that is zero degrees Celsius. So when they pass this line, the moisture in the air will become ice. So you will have ice crystals. Okay, so when they rising up, okay, they will have more, more, more and more condensation. You will have a lot of precipitation coming down, and you will have a lot of ice crystals and maybe snowflakes, you know, formed on top of the cloud. And those snowflakes they carry positive charge. Okay, down here at the bottom of your、uh, cloud, you will have negative charge. So you will have this lightning, okay? Because your cloud basically become a battery, <laughs> okay? But later, when the uh, uh, you know the rain becomes stronger and stronger, they will bring down a lot of we call that downdraft. So basically, descending air eventually will kill the rising warm air. So your thunderstorm will just、uh, dissipate. Okay, so that is how it developed. And well, sometimes this rising、uh, warm cloud, you will have a line of rising warm air ma air masses. Okay, so you will have this multi multi cell thunderstorm. So they basically in a line, and some of them can rising very very tall past the tropical pulse. You will have this very you know typical overshooting top. Cumulonimbus <laughs> cloud. Okay, so you can see、ah, this is this monster. We call that supercell thunderstorm. Okay, supercell thunderstorm, and also it may trigger this gust. The downdraft can be very very strong, right? So it's just like you splash some like water down the ground, that will trigger, you know, those gust front. Okay, and those gust front actually is the first stage of your Of your see here is your gas front like rolling around, right? So that is the first stage of your tornadoes, okay? Of your tornadoes. So you can see here. Let me show you the tornadoes. Okay, so you can see tornado initially you will have this rotating column of air. How you trigger that air? Well, this dusting front is one. Okay, this gas front is one type of one reason. Okay, so you will see those roll cloud. Okay, very amazing. <laughs> okay, so lightning, I covered it. Okay, and where you see most thunderstorm, of course, Florida, because warm air, a lot of warm air over there. Okay, but you can see in front of the Rocky Mountains on the east side of Rocky Mountains, you also have relatively higher number because air rising up against the mountains. Okay, so that's another region you see a lot of thunderstorm. All right, speaking of tornadoes, tornado as I mentioned earlier, you need to you first have this rotating column of air. Okay, but this rotating column of air initially is horizontal, right? It's like a spring. Okay, it's horizontal, but when they caught up by this thunderstorm, this super soul thunderstorm. See, they rising up very fast, right? They can push, they can turn this rolling air almost vertically. 
so you will like a blender okay so this blender of air will rise in silver high all the way past the trouble walls you know and down here you have the rotating air become very very fast they will have this you know funnel cloud formed beneath this uh, cumulative inverse cloud that is a very typical uh, characteristics of your tornadoes right okay so that is how it formed well watch this video you will see the animation okay all right the tornado frequency where you see most you can see this time not florida anymore actually is tornado alley right texas oklahoma these places okay you will have a lot of tornadoes why because because two things number one you have this rising air right against the mountains number two is you constantly have cold air from the north warm air from the south they fight against they conflict again you know moving into each other right okay so you have a lot of front those front will give you a lot of these gust front okay you have this rolling air and when they you know rise up against the mountains you will have a lot of like, tornadoes okay so that is the reason Okay, that is the reason. Your textbook have a very good explanation on that. Okay. All right. Last but not least, hurricanes. Okay. Hurricane will, in spite of, in spite of, it's like very destructive, but it's relatively easy to understand. It's just a warm air borne over our ocean can only be found over ocean. So when they hit the land, they will dissipate. Okay, so you can see necessary conditions is sea surface temperature, SST, need to be very warm, hard, past this temperature. Okay, they can rise up. Okay, you don't want different air masses to kill this rising air. They basically just go all the way to the travel house. Okay, and then because this pressure in the middle is very low, okay, your air join in and rising up. It will form a many many bands of rain but the heaviest rain is very close to this low pressure we call that i okay they rise up over here you have the strongest rain you have strongest wind okay in the middle where you have this hole actually no air can move make their way all the way to the center so that's why at the center you actually don't still have that very low pressure so upper level air will descend down to the ground to you know make up the void you have here okay so that is why in the middle in this eye you don't have any cloud it's basically it's a very sunny sky <laughs> Okay, in 2015, I remember it's a Hurricane Matthew. Uh, in between, people caught, people see, oh, a group of seagulls caught up, caught, you know, within this, um, this, uh, this eye, and they survived. Okay, it's very calm storm. So if you Google it or YouTube it, uh, the eye of the hurricane, you will see. You can enjoy sunshine in the middle of the hurricane, which is very interesting. <laughs> Okay, so that is another satellite image to show you the uh, the picture of this hurricane. Okay, and necessary conditions very important over the ocean. Okay, and very warm, and you need this initial disturbance, for example, ITCZ. Okay, and you need to have sufficient coral exposed. This is very important. Let me show you a picture. See here, that is all the heat hurricanes in history. And you can see in between along equator you have no hurricanes because along the equator there's no coral is force okay in terms of time distribution you can see in the late summer you have the highest number of hurricanes because our ocean is the warmest in september late august early september okay but now because global warming it's almost every month you have hurricanes Okay. And like I mentioned earlier, you don't want upper level air uh, have different moving direction. You want the air rise. Okay, so we call that low wind shear. Wind shear just like a like a uh, like a scissors.
okay you have the wind from different direction but in this case no okay so watch the video i posted on the study guide you will see animation okay all right so then you probably have heard a lot about this uh, uh, Stafford symptom scale right so that is simply based on wind speed to classify category categorize our hurricanes so category one must have the sustained wind faster than 74 mile miles per hour this is a must okay hurricane 5 category 5 this fast okay hurricane Katrina is hurricane is five you can see very strong wind so strong wind is the number one destructive factors associated with hurricane okay but you have more you also have the storm surge and many others storm surge flooding to give uh, to give the coastal regions a lot of uh, natural hazards okay so i believe that's all for this uh, chapter for this lecture uh, remember there's a lot of information okay it's in three chap not a lot of chapters actually in this module we may need to spend like three weeks so let me change that here so this is 311 11 to 12 okay to finish all these studies so don't need to no need to rush okay our goal is to learn not to rush okay so make sure you read your textbook and study my uh, study guide modules okay all right okay so that is for now and i will hold my office hours on monday as always uh, please come if you have any questions you want to talk to me uh, Otherwise, please feel free to send me emails about your questions at any time throughout the week. Okay, so I wish you uh, a very happy and productive week. All right, bye for now.